Well, come on in, everyone. We're just about to continue with more Bashed In. Last time, we did the Sundown Path, and two Proving Grounds is quite a bit done in very little time. This time, we're going to be heading on to one of my more favorite levels in the game. The Hanging Gardens. Folks used to go here to relax from their relaxing. Core detected. Beyond that, no telling what awaits. A veil hangs over this place. The dead welcome him with open arms. <laughs> if you can't tell from the atmosphere, this is the calamity took everybody after all. It's gonna be one of those levels. It's very dreary, very dark, and very very grim kids sees a plain frozen faces all around you don't much care to see him not like this yep like I said the moral dilemma earlier about leaving them as they are or putting them to rest even though after the calamity I'm not even sure what What's become of them, other than this? Just a bit of a reminder that, despite all the lightheartedness, there's... These folks never saw the calamity coming. Despite all the... someone did. Someone hmm. close. Hmm? And despite all the lightheartedness, there's... Another layer of death to all this. Someone who ain't like Mr. Beckley and his kindly wife. It was someone like him. The third living Kids person. Season, there agape in the flesh. Can't even get his attention. Yep, the third living person aside from the kid in rocks. It's a snag or two trying to get to him. He ain't about to stop, no matter what. It's interesting because he's been... got so many questions after all. Just ain't got time for answers. Up until a moment ago, I thought there was the Tundra Brothers didn't make it. No survivors. They never saw what it was like beyond the walls. Nor did the bird boy. Didn't make it. The Jawsons. They didn't make it. Grady Senior, Grady Junior, they didn't make it. But him, he survived. <laughs> I suppose that was a bit of a time to let Rox do his job. He can narrate this better than I could hope to. Kid finds proof enough that man ain't from around here. Found an Ura sigil. An insignia borne by the people of Ura heritage. The Tazel Spade was a rare sight in Ceylandia before the Calamity, as very few Ura lived in the city. Now there are fewer still. Just think, without that man, we wouldn't be here right now, would we? The core survives as well. So, hmm, it, it bugs me a little that you can reach in and grab it, because I, I like the idea of the force choice, but he does what he has to do. 
I feel like I would have done this anyways. Didn't want to just leave them there. It's, it's also really eerie how the, they're all gathered around the core as a form of safety, and it did nothing for them. And then, what do you say to a man who's seen too much? Kid hasn't a clue, but he says this. We have to go, please. He's a proper gentleman, that man. His name is Zolf. No hiding, he's an Ura. Folks like him ain't never been a common sight in Ceylandia. He's relieved to see a living face or two. The kid and I introduce ourselves in kind. Both to him and to each other for the first time. So now we know the narrator's name is Rux. Were there many Ura living in the city before the Calamity? Can they be trusted here? We fought the Ura decades ago, but that was then. Things are different between us now. And we've also met Zolf. For well, Zolf, Ceylandia was like a second home. His real word about his first home, too. Far to the east. I accidentally right-clicked in that. Um, asked the question, but essentially what is life like living in Ceylandia away from home? You didn't happen to see a girl who wore this in her hair, did you? We all lost loved ones in the calamity, he says. I don't know how I'm gonna go on without mine. Maybe this can help you take your, main, your mind off things. You could help us find new Skyway paths. Zolf offers to help me plot the Skyways for the kid. At least the calamity hasn't touched the stars, he says. And then ask Zolf about the Ura Sigil. Have you been in Ceylandia long? Did you travel all the way from the east? He was born in the Tazel Terminals. The Ura sent him on a mission of peace to our city. And he's lived here ever since. Hmm. Nope, we got another core, so... That's why this place is coming together. That's why things are gonna be all right. And here we have two new options. Well, look what we have here. Both of which are actually extremely interesting. Memorial plans for a structure that chronicles past and future efforts, a necessary testament to the calamity. By paying tribute to the past, one may better prepare for the future. The lost and found. Plans for a facility that holds and restores a variety of valuables. The Calamity tore the old world to pieces, yet even the smallest fragments can be restored in the Bastion. Personally, I think I'm going to go with the Memorial first. The Memorial unlocks Vigils. Vigils are tasks and challenges you can complete to earn fragments. The Memorial. Here yeah, a kid can pay respect to the old world and earn it in kind. See, uh, we have the Valediction um, Vigil, Construct a Memorial, and for that we get 250 fragments. The valediction, just another one of my sketches, nothing more. And we have the Dynasty, these are all challenges that we can do throughout the game. The Dynasty, earn glory on the Proving Grounds, requires you to earn first prize in seven Proving Grounds. It's a good, that's a big chunk of fragments. Gain the required number of mementos strewn across the countryside. We must find 15. Learn the secret st skills. Gain the required number of secret skill techniques. We're halfway there. The, the country. Restore the land piece by piece. Raise the required number of land pieces tr through travel and exploration. So, we have to raise 13,000 little chunks of the world. And we've already gotten almost 4,000. The Mercy. Vanquish creatures touched by the Calamity. Defeat the required number of different species of beast. That one's interesting. The Masons. Show surpassing skill with a sail hammer. Deliver a single blow, crushing blow to a foe for at least 70 damage. That's pretty powerful. Show surpassing skill with a breaker's bow. Defe defeat three foes with a single well-timed power shot. Okay. 
defeat a hardy foe with a last bolt in the clip of the Fang Repeater. Shows, shows their passing skill with a bullhead shield. Defeat a foe by counterblocking its melee attack while at less than 20% health. Shows their passing skill with the war machete. Quickly strike foes 15 times in a row without missing. Uh, show surpassing skill with the scrap musket and defeat 10 or more foes in a single well played shot and it's actually a hint to a weapon that we actually have not received yet but words can't express what happened but they're all I got I just like how much there is to the memorial it's a really, truly interesting area and, and there are there are actually more vigils to unlock later in the game so we'll see those as we progress, um, didn't find any upgrade materials we could use, so uh, I don't know we'll if they're down a couple more cores near the edge of the city. I believe this level's pretty short, so we'll. I think we'll take on both of these. Or now, I really want to leave the Hanging Gardens their own in their own episode, so. I know it's gonna be short, but the Hanging Gardens are one of my more favorite levels in the game, so I just kinda wanna leave it at that. As well as the memorial being such an interesting interesting building. So I guess that's it for this episode of Bastion, and next time we'll be taking on one of the two areas. Uh, I have yet to decide, but both of those areas are quite interesting, so until then, keep on keeping on.